Welcome! In this video, we are going to offer a proof of a very famous result. Uh, that is to say, the limit as x tends to 0 of the quotient of sine x to x is equal to 1. This is a very famous result, and it is traditionally proven using the squeezing theorem, and so I will introduce that here in just one second. And then a after we do this one, we will do its partner in crime, if you will, that of the limit as x tends to 0 of the quotient 1 minus cosine x divided by x is equal to 0. So we will uh, attempt proofs at both of these very famous limiting results. And uh, so let me go ahead and get started. The, we're, like I mentioned, we're going to use the squeezing theorem. And very basically, the squeezing theorem says that for... Uh, this sort of an inequality, let's say you have f of x is less than g of x is less than or equal to h of x, such that if you're able to show that the limit as x tends to some value, let's say c, of f of x, if that can be shown to be the same exact limit as x tends to c of the h of x, let's just call that L, all right, then it follows that by squeezing or sandwiching, because you're sandwiching G of X, which is right here in between these other two guys, F of X and H of X, by sandwiching or squeezing that, then it follows that the limit as X goes to that value of C of G of X is also that limiting value of L, okay? So there is the squeezing theorem uh, very basically. And before I actually get into the proof, I need to uh, touch base on uh, a couple of preliminaries. So let's look at those preliminaries so that we're all on the same page. So preliminaries. And the first of these preliminaries uh, is the following. If you take a circle, all right, and then you take a sector of that circle, let's just say I took this sector, and I'm interested in that area. Let me call the area of this sector A sub S. Okay, so A sub S is going to equal the, it, it, we're defining that as the area of the sector. And um, <clears throat> let's suppose that the circle has a radius of R. And let's also say that uh, the central angle here is theta. Okay. Then we, we've done this in many, many past videos then we know that the arc length here, this arc length, which I will do with an A, with a little arc over it, let's say this is the arc length of uh, the arc length that's related to the sector. Okay. This arc length, we've, sh we've uh, discussed this in many past videos, is equal to R times that theta, okay? Um, a way to remember that, as I've said in past videos, is that if you can just remember that the circumference of an entire circle is 2 pi times R, 2 pi is the central angle of the entire circle, and so you're just multiplying the radial dimension times that central angle, and if you can just remember it from the circumference, you can deduce it from um, any sector as well. Uh, speaking of which, uh, we know again that the central angle of the entire circle is 2 pi radians in this case. And so we can um, do the following. We can set a proportion. So by proportion, I would have the following. I would have that uh, the area of the sector is to the entire area, let's say this is the entire area, 
area of entire circle. Okay, and we all know what that is. That's just pi r squared. Okay, and I can say by proportion, the area of the sector is to the entire area as we can look at the, the central angle. So I can say as theta is to the central angle of the entire circle is 2 pi. Okay, that's one way of looking at it. So th this would be the ce central angle. of sector and this is the central angle of the entire circle or you know, we can also do the following we can also say that the area of the sector is to the area of the entire circle as the arc length of the sector is to the entire arc length of the circle which is the circumference so it doesn't really matter we know that this is we just showed that this is r theta and we know that this is 2 pi r. So when you divide through, the r's cancel and you get exactly the same result. You get theta over 2 pi. Now, we, we just said what the entire area is. It's pi r squared. So if you solve for a of the sector, it's going to be theta over 2 pi times pi r squared. Okay, so the pi's cancel and we have, in our first preliminary result, we have shown that um, the area of the sector is equal to a half of um, theta r squared. Okay, before I leave this first preliminary point, let me uh, give us a motivation how to remember that. Uh, actually, this is very basic. If you haven't seen this, it's worth you checking this out motivation to remember that um, if you take that sector let me redraw it here here is that sector it's a bad rendering of that but it'll do for now so we know that this is a radial dimension this is a radial dimension in fact this right here is a radial dimension. That's why I said it's kind of a bad drawing because it looks like this is longer than the other two. But really, this is a sector of a circle, so all of those are radii. Okay, And we've already shown that the arc length here is r times the central angle theta. So it stands to reason, if you know the area of a triangle, this looks kind of like a triangle. The area of a triangle is 1 half the base times the height. So you could just uh, remember that as your motivation. One half the base times the height. And if you do that, you get one half the base is r theta. In this case, times the height is r. So in fact, you get the same result. Okay. So th that's just a little side note there, if you will. And it's just to help us remember some things. Okay, now uh, let's move on to the crux of the matter here. The crux of the matter is to say in preliminary 2, uh, if I take now a unit circle, and what we mean by that is obviously, as the name implies, that uh, mm, this circle has a radius of 1. Okay, so it's one all over here and over there, it's one. And now if I were to look at some things geometrically on this unit circle here. So I'm going to just draw something out like this and draw a big triangle here. Okay, and, uh, and then I'm also going to, from the point that this uh, red line that I just drew intersects the circle, I'm going to connect the dots here this way okay so um, now we have three things that we can look at um, here geometrically and try to use our squeezing theorem ultimately so this is a unit circle uh, you should be able to show without any problem that uh, th this dimension right here is just the radius and in this case it's 
it's a radius, it's a unit radius, so it's one. And that means that from simple trigonometry, this guy right here, the height of that big triangle, is going to be the tangent of x, right? Tangent of x, and the way I always remember these trig uh, relationships is by a mnemonic device, Oscar has, that's for the sine, opposite over hypotenuse, O for Oscar, H for hypotenuse. Oscar has a heap, that's cosine, a heap, of apples. So opposite over adjacent is your tangent, and so in this case it'll be the tangent of x is the opposite, which is what we're looking for, over that unit radial dimension of 1. Okay, So that is uh, uh, th the tangent right there. And one other thing that I can point out here is that uh, by a similar reasoning, I can point out, let me do this in a different color altogether. Let's do this in green. So let's say this right here. This green height, by a similar approach, is going to be, okay, let's remember that the hypotenuse of that smaller triangle is uh, 1. It's a unit circle, so it's 1. So the, the thing I just drew, that height in green, is going to be the uh, sine of x, right? Okay, so sine of x is the opposite, which is what we're looking for, over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse here is 1. So that is just to say sine of x is what we're looking for over 1, or what we're looking for is just sine of x. Okay, now having done that, um, I can do the following. I can, uh, I can set up a proof, and here, here it goes. So my proof is going to say the following. Uh, well, before I do the, okay, yeah, let me go ahead and start the proof. So proof, let me do this in blue. So the proof would say the following. It would say that I have this big triangle. Okay. That big triangle having the angle of x as we showed in the picture there and the side of tan x. The area of that triangle is going to be larger than or equal to this sector, which is lying over here. Okay. And that's going to be larger than or equal to that other triangle with the dashed line that I drew there. So that's going to be this little picture. This is really not drawn to scale as you can see because it looks like what I just drew. Let me redraw it because it doesn't look very good. All right, let's try that again. Let me see if I can do a better job here. Right. Okay, and... Uh, Okay, so now, b before I move on, I, let me make one point. I just drew in the x here. Uh, we know that this arc length is going to be in the center sector. The arc length is going to be the radial dimension, which is 1 here times the central angle of x. So we know that that's just x, okay? That's what I just wrote in there. And now, I, so if I were to uh, use a, a little subscript convention, I'm going to let the Greek letter delta, I'm going to just let this represent the triangle pieces, okay? And I'm going to let the capital delta equal the big triangle.
and I'm going to let the little delta, the lowercase one, represent the small triangle. Okay, with that then, I can say that from all of this stuff here, I get the following. I get that A subscript, the big triangle, is greater than or equal to A of the sector is greater than or equal to A of the little triangle, little delta subscript, okay? And, well, uh, if you look at what is the area of the big triangle, it's one half the base times the height, so that's one half the base is one times the height is 10 x, that's going to be greater than or equal to, the area of the sector is, again, one half that quote unquote base times the height, so it's going to be one half of one times uh, the base, one half the base, okay, one half the base we're saying is our little arc length x times the height is the radial dimension, which is one, okay, uh, and, and uh, okay, so one half the, it'll, it'll really technically be one squared. And, Okay, so uh, let me not get too de derailed here, but the area of a sector is one half the the central angle times the radial dimension squared, right? So it's one half the central angle is x times the radial dimension squared, and then it's going to be greater than or equal to the area of the small triangle is one half the base times the height. So it's one half the base is one times the height is that sine of x. And so from here, we get the following result. We get that tangent of x over 2 is greater than or equal to x over 2 is greater than or equal to sine of x over 2. And now if I were to multiply both sides, multiply through, let's multiply through by um, 2 t over sine of x. So multiply, let's say, through by 2, okay, multiply through by 2 over sine x, I'm going to get, on the left, I'm going to get 10, so first of all, the 2 on the top is going to wipe out all the 2's on the bottom, note that first of all. Then I'm going to have 10x over sine x, but 10x is sine x over cos x, divided by sine x, so the sines cancel, you're left with 1 over cos x is larger than or equal to x over sine x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, And uh, if I were to take the reciprocal of all of these, I have to flip my orientation of the inequalities, so I get that, um, at, la at last I get that cos of x is less than or equal to sine of x over x is less than or equal to 1. And then, uh, now I'm in a position where I can apply my uh, limits. So I note that the limit as x tends to 0 of cos of x is, well, we know that that's just 1. And I know, so that's for this guy on the left side of the leftmost side of this uh, triple inequality, and I know that the limit of the, as x goes to 0 of just the constant 1 is 1, that's the r extreme rightmost of this triple inequality, and so therefore, by the squeezing theorem, by the squeezing theorem, it follows that the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x must also go to 1, okay? So th th this concludes that piece of the proof. In the next video we'll do, and the next one will be a lot easier since we've laid in a lot of the groundworks here, but um, so the, the, in the next video we will show the limit as x tends to 0 of 1 minus cos x over x uh, is going to be 0. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in that one.